I, I checked the board there on my birthday in 1953. It was it was a good feeling because, as I said, I had been on the USS Coral Sea and uh, I uh, was a what they, a so-called uh, plane pusher on the flight deck of the USS Coral Sea. And while I made a lot of friends and had a lot of good times there, it wasn't uh, as satisfying as as it was on the USS Bennington because I could see right away that I was going to um, be involved in something that uh, was more uh, fascinating as far as I was concerned in arresting gear and not be uh, in the, on the in the plane on the plane pushing task. Operation Mariner uh, was one in which we were involved, the Bennington, with uh, ships and carriers from Canada and the United States. Um, we were uh, the, the Blue Fast Carrier Task Force, and actually what happened was that fog uh, moved in and surrounded us with some of the planes in the air. Now, some of those planes made it back to the carrier in time to, in t to the carriers, I should say plural, in time to land, uh, but uh, about 32 of them were not, not that lucky. And uh, they were caught out there with low fuel, a landing area not in sight, nor could they make it with the fuel they had. So uh, one of the possibilities when they figured out that they couldn't come back because we were wrapped in fog was that they ditch about 110 miles west in the, uh, we were up in the Arctic and Greenland area, that they ditch 110 miles west, and uh, because the vis visibility was relatively good there. And then the sur surviving pilots and crewmen would have been picked up by the USS Redfin, which is a submarine. Well, the uh, two admirals who conferred on this uh, gave the go-ahead on it. But just about the time they were to uh, in uh, initiate this, plan, the fog began to thin around us. That is, the fog began to thin around the carriers. And so the carriers were called back. We headed into the wind, and uh, in the distance you could hear the, the uh, planes coming in, but we, the, the, the fog was, shall we say, fickle, because for a while we'd be open and for a while shut, and then it seemed to shut up. Uh, shut, shut in a bit more as they got in close. And every once in a while, when they could see their way onto deck, they would take a, a chance and land. And uh, some of the uh, planes had to land on Canadian carriers, and some of the Canadian carriers' uh, planes landed on ours. Uh, the Wasp, the Bennington, the Magnificent. The Magnificent was the Canadian carrier. Well, anyway, it was, uh, you could hear these planes coming in, and the, uh, you can imagine how frantic the pilots were who were just about out of gas. Finally, they did get aboard at, at 1828 on that day. Uh, the air boss said, last plane recovered, and uh, everybody cheered, and you know, everybody was happy, and but uh, the uh, thing to note is that just about as soon as they got aboard again, the uh, fog closed in over the ship, and uh, we were there was no hardly any disability, uh, hardly any vis uh, visibility. So that's pretty much what it was. It was uh, the what they called the uh, miracle of Operation Mariner. At that time, there was the, the AJ-1, which had props on it, but was also jet-assisted. Uh, and the, the AJ-1 was the first United States bomber, which was uh, designed especially to carry the A-bomb. Uh, it was North American's first, uh, first attack bomber. It was designed just at, just at the end of World War II, and uh, 
its ability to carry the atomic bomb made it a formidable um, a piece in our uh, U.S. arsenal. And I uh, alluded, alluded in the book to the fact that uh, we may have had a bomb or parts which could have been assembled uh, that were nuclear aboard. Now that was highly uh, that was highly confidential stuff. It was top secret. So we, uh, when they unloaded whatever it was, they unloaded. They had it all covered, and Marines, uh, Marine guards stood around and uh, uh, kept people away from it. I had to put two and two together. First of all, the, the suspicion started when. The the uh, whatever it was 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 brought aboard, and it was under cover. It was escorted by uh, it was uh, tightly escorted. It was guarded by Marines, uh, and then the other part of the equation is that you had the two AJ ones aboard, and uh, were, uh, they were going to be operating with us. So, uh, if I had to guess, I would say that. If there wasn't a bomb itself there, that surely that there were there were the makings of that, or probably the uh, assembly components of that aboard. Uh, I called my Navy experiences indelible, and I really feel they were. I uh, I came up with a, a this. I said they were like a like liquid in a funnel. That is, so much passes through a funnel in so short a time. Uh, there's some uh, there's so much action, so many unforgettable events in such a brief time uh, frame. Um, why did I write the book back to the Bennington? Well, as I I searched the internet uh, a lot of times for to find more about the Bennington, about incidents uh, specifically relating uh, to what I had gone uh, uh, and uh, what I had experienced relating to Big Ben's. Uh, post-war in Korean history, and I found data here, I found data there, but I couldn't find much on Bennington's one and only Mediterranean cruise in 53-54, and, uh, and I, nor could I find uh, much about the largest peacetime maneuver in naval history, Operation Mariner, in which we participated in the Arctic and North Atlantic regions. So uh, that, for me, was uh, a good, uh, good enough reason to write the book. I, I just, just feel felt that uh, I did not not want this uh, period of Bennington's history to uh, uh, be, uh, fade away without someone's being able to uh, uh, look at it and say, "Here's what the Bennington was d- doing in the post-war." I have to say that I learned one big thing in being on those flight decks. I learned very rapidly, as did my shipmates, that you survive through teamwork. And that sounds like uh, like a trite statement to make, but that many persons on a ship, like 2,900 crew, uh, that includes the ship's company and the air wing, um, there has to be teamwork. Uh, if, uh, If not, uh, you don't get the mission accomplished.